So welcome to the Streamzik community call for 2nd May 2024. The first point on the agenda are some PRs and issues. Uh, I edit a few of them. I think for this one, we need to decide what will be the name for the authentication type based on the service accounts. Anyone has any thoughts on it? Well, I guess I left my preference on that, even other people. Uh, maybe I'm not sure Marco is not on the call today. So I'm not sure if we should wait for him or just continue the discussion on the PR. On my side, I was just commenting the, so the name. I, I also have to come back and review yeah, the implementation itself, which is the most important part. So do we leave it for next time or what are you proposing? Well, maybe waiting for next time will be too much, uh, you know, having this PR open for the next two weeks just because of a naming. Uh, I would say you raised this. So all of us, we are all aware that we are having this discussion. Let's try to make a final decision on the on the PR itself. Okay. So the next one is this thing, some user opened, but it didn't move anywhere. And I think it is already implemented anyway. Should we close it? Yep. Okay. The next one is about the quota stuff where I think we are stuck on something as well. Yeah, we are stuck on the issue with the excluded principles. I guess this was the last comment from you. And I added the PR, which we should discuss um, to the agenda as well in the quotas plugin. So maybe so what, I can. What is the go, issue? Uh, like with this PR or with the quotas one? Well, in general, with the quotas. 
Uh, there is for this PR there is an issue with the excluded principles when we uh, specify the distinguished names there. So yeah, I opened the issue in the Kubuntas plugin and also created a fix, which uh, now follows the pattern of the super users as is, as it is in Kafka. But we are not prefixing the principles with the user prefix. So that there was a discussion on the PR if we should follow it also for this one or uh, we should keep it as it is because from the information we have, there will be, there is not supported any other type of the Kafka principle, just the user type. So the discussion is around if we should add the prefix there anyway. I'll keep it as it is. From my point of view, we should maybe uh, add the prefix there and keep it consistent with the super user's pattern, like in Kafka. Anyone has any thoughts on that? Sorry, I was looking for the right window because I am just with the laptop today. So, um, yeah, so I will be consistent. I was just wondering if uh, if we want to kind of simplify users lives as today if uh, they omit the user colon part we can just fall back to that so default as default if you are omitting the type you are falling back to user colon as a prefix so using user as a principal but i would agree that having user there will be clearer well, isn't that just overcomplicating it? Defaulting or having the user Yeah, the, the defaulting. Well, you know, just for kind of backward compatibility, if we have someone using the code plugin and they are specifying the users this way. That breaks again anyway, because we replace there the comma with semicolon. Ah, right. Yeah, okay, so no defaulting, and then uh, let's use the user principal prefix anyway. So at least that's my opinion. Okay, so that's for that. And yeah, that's for the second. I guess this yeah. is the same edit as a duplicate. Yeah. Anyone has any other PRs to discuss? If not, then the next topic are proposals so uh, i added two links to the agenda <clears throat> one is for the proposal i put together which handles the improved handling of the certificate renewals and replacements in the operands based on the kafka clients where currently they are unav unavailable for some time uh, due to TLS misconfiguration, so that's up for review. But that's relatively fresh, so I guess most people didn't solve it yet. And I don't remember why I added this. Oh yeah, actually, there was no progress on this one since last time, so should we close it?
yeah to be honest it's march and you pinged the user two weeks ago Anyone wants to raise any other proposals or discuss anything about them? If not, then the issue triage is next. So I mark this for to be triaged again, because I think there were several people interested in working on this, but I have no idea how should this look like. And I opened it, but I basically opened it on Tom's request in a comment. So yeah, I think we need to if you want someone to implement it, we probably need to have some idea how should it be implemented. So does anyone have an idea what do we actually understand under this and how should the PR for this look like? The thing I wasn't clear on reading the issue was, oh, do we want to make it easier to discover them when you're writing a Java app or to discover the pure YAML files? Because I feel like that's two separate things. In the access operator, we do make use of the API module in order to understand how to parse the CRDs or the CRs. Um, and I felt that was fairly straightforward to use, but I can always look again and see if there's improvements that could be made. But that, that was the thing I wasn't sure. But you know what you are using there, right? You are not trying to discover something. Yes, that's true. We know exactly which files we're after. I was just wondering if we really need something like that. I mean, I don't know how many people are using the API today. And uh, we, don't, we don't have, I mean, we don't have feedback from uh, the community. Uh, someone, I don't know, asking, uh, hey, I'm not able to use the API because I don't understand this, this and this. So I don't know how much time we want to invest on implementing this. So should we close it? One uh, possibility is closing it, or the other one is uh, leaving it, of, of course, removing the needs triage label. And then if someone is interested, we should then think about some ideas. But that doesn't work, Paolo. There were people interested in this in the past. 
but when they ask about how they can implement it, then we actually don't have an answer for them. Did they ask this on the Slack channel or somewhere yes. else? I don't know, I feel that I will just close it. Yeah, I think um, I've just been rereading the the discussion uh, that this originated from, and it's not completely clear to me now exactly um, exactly what I thought was needed at that point. Um, so I think this is a little bit underspecified at the moment to sort of really, um, yeah, sort of understand what it is that we need to build or what it is that those users on Slack actually need. Um, do they need access to the, the CRD sort of YAML or JSON or do they need, they, you know, sort they of don't a way need of... They don't need anything, Tom. The issue, we mark the issue as help wanted. So it gets people who want to contribute something. Okay. Well, then I think we should close it because it's not clear what it is that we think that we need. And, you know, if we figure out what it is that we need, then we can open a new one and hopefully capture exactly what the requirement is a bit better this time. It's my fault for not being completely clear in that discussion, I think. I don't think it's your fault. I think we should have followed through on the first triage, to be honest. Okay. The next issue, I actually opened it for tracking purposes uh, because we didn't have it open, but we knew about this issue for some time. So I guess we just accept it and track it or something like that. Yeah, sounds reasonable. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if we should put help needed or help wanted label on it. I think it would be great if someone can help fixing it, but it would basically mean that someone has to figure why does it not work in the FIPS mode in the first place, which I'm not sure it's trivial. Yeah, that's the big problem. It's not just about, about getting users from the community, but users having FIPS enabled clusters and interested in having this JMX stuff working on FIPS clusters. So I'm not sure how many users are out there. Yeah, but maybe if you put label on it, if someone runs into it, it will be clear that they might need to look into it. Yeah. Touching a label is free. 
Maybe we can update the description. Okay, the next issue is about the throttle replicas. I think we had it already last time, but very missing Tom or Federico or someone like that. Yeah, so this is a, an interesting use case, which will be a uh, race condition between traffic operator and cruise control in this case. Uh, so we already recently introduced a configuration and environment variable to specify which configurations, topic configuration you can actually change. Uh, but here we need, we will need another variable to to specify which configuration you can ignore, uh, and that will allow to fix this issue. But maybe also other uh, corner cases like like this. So it will be a matter of giving a little bit more flexibility to topic of the configuration. Uh, I propose also, I think Jakub yeah, agreed to, to add another environment variable called stream Z uh, ignore topic configurations, which for this specific use case will be set automatically to ignore this uh, re replication throttle, throttling uh, configuration that are added dynamically by cruise control. Uh, but then uh, if there are other use cases, uh, similar use cases, uh, it can be used to, uh, to avoid issues like this. And and the, the other environment variable, so the alterable topic configuration already has some logic that we can improve to cover this use case and also related tests that we can uh, use to create other tests for this new variable. So there is already some support for, for adding this. That sounds fairly reasonable to me. Fede, we've got a, it sounds like we're going to end up with a sort of a, an allow list and a deny list. I assume one's going to take precedence over the other, is it, or? Yes, 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 because I already, I, I verified the issue and I I proposed a workaround initially using the alterable topic configuration, but of course, this is not handy because you need to specify every, configuration in there. So we need a way to ignore. Uh, yeah, so you're right. So we already have a method called skip non alterable configs, which can be changed, improved to also cover this new variable. So it's not that we need a lot of code. We can just improve that, that one. Sorry, I'm muted. So do we want to add a new variable or use the existing one? 
No, I think it's, for me it's better to add a new variable because it's, it's kind of messy. I, I initially proposed to reuse the same variable, but then I thought again, and maybe it's better to have them separated so it's clear what, what's the purpose. So it would be something like, Yeah, streams ignore topic config. That's what we proposed, okay. which is similar to the other one. Yeah. So the options configured in there will be ignored when doing the diffing, basically. Yes. Yes. With a warning. With a warning in the log and in the status, of course. And then should it have by default these two options? Yes, yes, only when cruise control integration is enabled. So we already have that information in the configuration. So you know when cruise control is deployed and in the integration is enabled. So in that case, you can change, you can, you can add these two configurations uh, automatically. So that's, hang on a second. Um, so we know about cruise control when the topic operator is configured to use cruise control, but that's not the same thing as knowing that the topic operator is being used against this cluster, is it? Yeah. Yes. So from the topic operator configuration, you know when when this is integrated and configured for to be used with the cluster. So in that case, what? you can. Yeah. What I mean is it's, it's possible to have the topic operator just sort of set up running against a cluster that's got cruise control running in it. I'm thinking in the standalone case for the topic operator particularly, I guess. Um, and so the possibility for this conflict in this issue exists, but the topic operator wouldn't actually know that cruise control was being used. I mean, it's a corner case, I think, and maybe you'll tell me that I'm completely wrong, but I think that exists, right? Yeah, you're right. In the standalone use case, um, there is this possibility. Um, so so you, you just set the variable to false, so integration enabled false, and then to, you will still you will still eat the issue, but you can then set this property manually on, on the uh, variable, right? But it should be something that we have to document, right? If you are running topic operator in standalone and you're running cruise control, please set the M bar. So we can also do it differently. We Maybe we can, we don't have to add the logic to default it somehow into the topic operator. Maybe instead we can add the logic to set this variable to the cluster operator and then simply tell the users that, yeah, use this option if you are using it standalone and yeah, yes. your cluster is using cruise control. Yes, exactly. So on, only when, when it is all managed by StreamZ, we can do automatic things. Otherwise, if it's standalone, then you are in control and you, you can set the configuration you want. And the default of this uh, new variable should be the opposite of the other one. So I think I have a note somewhere. Yes, should be the default should be known. So we do, we do, do not ignore any configuration. Uh, while in the other uh, variable, which is alterable topic config, is all. So we allow to alter uh, all configuration. So th this should be the default of.
right? So something like this. Does it make sense? Yes. Well, the last thing to add, the maybe is uh, is I don't I don't I cannot think any use case where you should you can use both of the, these two configs. So the the old one and ignore topic config. So I will raise a warning if the user set both of them. Do you agree? So it's one way or the other. So all you need to limit the configuration so to ignore something. Yeah, sounds good. So if both ignore topic config and... Uh, yes, and the other is called alterable topic config. Not an error, but I, I was thinking about a warning, both in log and status. So that okay. the user, yeah, yeah. Uh, one last question then. Um, if these things are kind of opposites, why is one called ignored and the other is called alterable? Could it not be like unalterable? Yeah, so alterable is what we already have. Uh, so initially it was proposed blacklist, but I think we cannot use blacklist for other reasons. Uh, I propose ignore, but if you have any better name. Well, unalterable is the one that I was thinking of because it mm. makes it clear that they're kind of related. An alterable, um, yeah, could be good. So you want to rename it? Like this? Yeah, fine for me. Yeah, if, if people agree that's an okay name. Naming is so hard. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so like this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay, and the original user was interested in contributing it or? Yes, yes, yes. So I propose uh, if he, if he wanted to do that, it's okay. Otherwise, I can do it. But he, he said, okay, I want to contribute this one. So he was just waiting for our agreement on the spec. Okay, so like this and. We can remove the triage label, but if he might be interested or she uh, to look into it, then we don't add the help wanted. Sounds good? Yes. Thanks. Okay. The next issue is from Paolo. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, it's something that assignment. I was already in sync with Lukas. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we can just remove the mid triage as I'm working on this currently. Okay. Uh, sorry, so about the previous one, so uh, in the upstream Kafka, we haven't completely support uh, migrating to craft with the bar support, but we are working on that in 3.8 but still I'm sure if that will happen, just for your, for your information. Uh, 
I guess it works for Paolo. Sorry, Luke, can you say that again? I miss what you said. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Zepad support, when you enable Zepad support in Zookeeper's mode, you cannot migrate into craft successfully in 3.7, I mean, but we are working on that to unlock this limitation in 3.8. So, I mean, even though you create this system test, it might not work as expected because it is expected it won't, it won't work. Oh, right. So we should wait for 3.8. Yeah. This is what you mean, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you, can you make a comment on the, on the issue, Luke? Okay, I will do. Yeah, thanks. So, so we can track of this and then Lucas will we, know. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So I guess that anyway, Jacob, we can remove the needs triage. Uh, Lucas know that it's something that is going to work, but waiting for three eight because it cannot work today. Okay. So this is some issue from some user who has some strange API server configuration and has some problem, but the user didn't even share a proper log. And he reported it with Kubernetes 1.22, which we anyway don't support anymore. So it's not really clear how much that applies or doesn't apply. Should we convert it to discussion or something? Yep. Yeah, sorry for the delay, but I'm not used to work with just the laptop monitor and jumping across windows. But having workers at home, it's a pain when your office is out of order. I was just reading about this go away chance thing. I mean, I, it looks like it's a, a standard Kubernetes thing. So we should probably try and work with it. Oh, it does seem like this might be more of a, maybe more of a fabricate problem than a Strimsy problem. Well, it's hard to look into it if it requires a special configured cluster and we don't even have a lock available. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, the next issue is
about scheduling affinity. I try to explain to the user how it works, but I didn't got any reply. So I guess might want to convert this into discussion as well. Agree. Plus it seems to be for streams is 0 20. which is like middle ages. So this one is valid and I'm actually looking into it independently on this issue, but we have another issue tracking this. So I suggest we close it as a, as a duplicate. Yep. Uh, so this is something Marosh opened as part of his user operator performance testing. It looks like when using it with a zookeeper based cluster, it stops working at some number of users when trying to manage the Scrum SHA users. And the log seems to suggest that some request to Zookeeper probably runs into some size limitations or something. I guess the question is if this can be tuned somehow in Kafka and Zookeeper or if we really care about it. Maybe we can try to create an issue in upstream Kafka, but I guess it won't get any attraction because it's happening Zookeeper. Yeah. If it is just a matter of Zookeeper tuning and we can match this, the same number of users of Craft, that would be great. But I think it's, it's too easy. It looks like it's too easy. That's a fix. Yeah, I mean, the fact that the limit in craft is what getting on for 20,000 users um, and with the zookeeper going away and the fact that this has been found in 
um, system tests, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure this is really worth fixing. So should we close it? Let's reject it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a good find, but you know, any system has limits, and this is the limit for Zookeeper, and Zookeeper's going away. So, So does this make sense? Yeah, S E E M. But it looks good. Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. The Next issue is actually something I opened. It seems like we have two very similar methods which are doing the very similar things, but one of them are in the CA classes and one of them are in some cert util class. The methods in the CA classes, they are related to the Cruise control zookeeper and broker certificates, which are also used as a server certificates, and the ones in the cert utils is related to the topic user operator, Kafka exporter, and cluster operator certificates, which are used only as a as a user certificates, but it didn't really seem to me like this is something what makes sense to be spread across multiple different places and it seemed to me like it would make more sense to for example have all of it in the ca class i definitely think it's good for us to move more of this code to be co-located um i vaguely remember looking at these i can't remember why i didn't move them when i did other refactoring um but i do wonder if the cluster ca is the right place for them or not just because um, if we're doing other ref like the other kind of stuff that I've been looking at certificate wise, if the aim is to eventually get to a point where we're requesting certificates through some other entity, I think we need to think carefully about what should go in the CA and what actually shouldn't be handled by the CA. So I don't, I guess my answer is, what I'm trying to say is that I think this is a reasonable issue, but given the other refactoring that we're doing, I don't know if we want to go ahead and do this. If it would be obvious where it should go. Given so other. if you have different ways how to request the certificate, you would still need to have the counterpart of all of these methods. Yes. And wouldn't they be logically more in some non-static class structure where you would have different classes implementing some interface or handling some or extending some abstract class and doing the same thing 
in different ways rather than having them in a many different static methods being called directly? Yes, I think so. But yeah, I, I without looking at the code, I don't know off the top of my head what the reason was why I didn't move, why I didn't co-locate those ones at the time when I updated the cluster operator, topic operator, use operator ones to all be insert utils. So are you suggesting to close this for the time being? Yeah, I think that's what I'd vote for. Just I think there's other moving pieces. So like this, does it make sense? Yeah. And uh... The last issue for triage is something what some user opened about having the pause reconciliation annotation on streams report sets. I don't think that's so simple because it will ultimately fight with the Kafka custom resource or Kafka connect custom resource operators. There also doesn't seem to be any use case but it's still fairly new discussed yesterday so maybe we should leave it for next time to see where the discussion goes yeah sounds reasonable yep. in which case this is it for the triage does anyone have any other business Well, there is no enough time, but um, uh, I guess that together with Lukas and uh, yeah, we have Tom today, but I guess that we have to postpone for the next time when Tom will be able to join uh, the discussion around uh, the canary, because um, we know it seems that I don't know where we want to go with the canary in Go. Uh, I'm not spending much time on it, of course, uh, but time to time I see users coming and asking for change, upgrading Go version, or adding some examples uh, lately, the last days. So it seemed that someone is using it, but we had the plan to move to Java, so Lukas worked on a POC, rewriting the canary in Java. There was a proposal that at some point yeah, it was just stuck with no discussions. So, of course, it's not something that we will can discuss now at this point. Yeah, just a heads up. I think that we should discuss what the canary future is, if we should archive the Go one and moving to the Java one, but of course making uh, progress on the proposal that Lukas uh, wrote. Yeah, so anyway, something maybe for the next time. I would like to have Tom on the call as well, so maybe in, in, uh, in one month at this point. Yeah.